going to be making this dress. It has a skirt with gathers and a yoke at the top. The waist is in the middle of the yoke. So it's going to require using the top of the bodice, the bottom of the bodice and the top of the skirt and combining them. Then we'll be adding additional fullness to the bodice area so that it looks like this when it's finished with a collar. The sleeves have some gathers at the top and they're three quarter length, but they're also pushed up a little bit. So I think we'll just shorten the sleeves a couple of inches and put on a nice wide cuff. So to do that, I need to open some basic patterns and I'm going to start with basic form 13. And if I've I've also got that on zero share. So because I'm going to be cutting out a section of this, I probably don't want those two. So I didn't need to bring them down. And then I want to click cancel so I don't accidentally delete everything on the screen. I'll save my sleeve till later. In fact, since we've already fixed a sleeve, I'm going to go back and get the one that has the already fixed um, fullness ease in the cap. And when I'm looking at a pattern, I always like to look at it with the side seams together because they sew together. and the skirt pieces. So in that picture, it looks to me like we've got maybe two and a half inches above and below the waist, or perhaps two inches above and three below. And I think that's what I'm going to go with, two inches above the waist and three inches below the waist. So in my front, well, I'm going to offset these lines up two inches and these down three to start with. So I have separate pieces and we might have to take a little bit of an average. Create line, offset, and I don't have uh, the reference selection box clicked, but I think I want it for this, so I'm going to do that. Select the lines to offset. I'm going to choose all of these at the same time. Say OK, and I could switch to value, but I'm happy with that. And I'm going to do the same thing with these. I'll switch to value though and say OK. and I want negative three. And I know that because the negative is on the inside where I want the line to be. Usually you think in terms of negative being counterclockwise and positive being clockwise. But when it's in and out, sometimes I get surprised. Usually in is negative and out is positive. Negative three. All right. Yeah. 
So I'm going to start by separating them. I could trace them off. I could come up and do split. Split a piece on a line. Select the splitting line and I'm going to make some temporary pieces so I'm just going to give them short names. And this one. Okay, so I now have this piece, that's the upper half, this one that's the lower half, this one that's the other lower half, and then I have this random piece that I'm going to just delete. So I, I don't want to change my original, so I guess I'm going to delete that one too. Keep it safe. All right. And I'm going to go back to Modify Piece Split. Select the splitting line. Can I choose to? Apparently not. That just is set. Ah. I'm going to cancel and I undocked this by accident so I'm going to just drag it over the little squares come up and I'm just going to put it right there and it will come back over here. I could have used the one on the side too if I had wanted to. So I'm going to separate those off. So I now have separate pieces. That one's garbage. That one I don't want to ruin. And if you happen to pull down my originals, please rename them before you do this. I'm setting such a bad example, aren't I? Okay. Well, we'll do it the right way then. On these last two, this is how we need to do all of them when you've got the original. So I'm going to switch to File, Save As. And you know how to do that. For dress. It just needs to have a different name. And this one. Just always put your name on it. And if you're working on a style at work, then you need to put the name of the style at the beginning. Okay, so I can actually take these now and right click and say piece to menu, piece to menu. Now I have that little original line on there if I want to come back to it. And something tells me I'm going to wish I did that with the front too. Modify, Piece, Split, and I have lots of options, but I want it on the line that I drew, so I'm entering a name. I'm not deleting the original piece, just And 
the next splitting line. Well, that's interesting. That's not what I wanted, so it's a good thing I saved the original. Hmm. It connected them all. Sometimes it's just too smart. So I'm going to do this section a different way. I can probably go back to the way I did the others over here, but these I'm going to trace off. Create piece trace. I don't need this information for the single dart for this dress. I don't. So, okay, I don't need them. There it is. And I'll add lower back. Yes, the pause was me looking for the M. Because I decided to try labeling it nicely. And that one will be CB. Okay. So cancel. And I can send that one to the menu. When you delete a piece, you just, if it's in the menu, it doesn't actually get deleted. So I'll move those down to where they relate. So I've got the equivalent of my bodice and my skirt lined up together and I've got my bodice and now I have this one last piece to do and I'll go back to split and see if that works. No, that does not work. So I'm going to trace this one off too. This is why it's good to know you have options. Because a lot of times you can make things work with options. And if it turns out the same way, That's good. Okay, so I traced around it. I got my side front and so it has a name. All right, so I'm through with that. I separated the pieces. I'm going to send this one away. I guess I don't have to, but I can get it back down if I want to, so I'm going to delete it from my screen. Modify delete piece, choose the piece, say OK, and then be sure and choose cancel so you don't delete anything else by accident. 
and I'm going to delete my sleeve too because we're going to use one that's already fixed. Okay. So they're all lined up here. And I will be converting these to gathers and extra flare. So I'm going to set those aside. And I'll be doing something similar with those. So I want to keep my front separate from my back and some of my backs are labeled so I know what they are. So I'm going to start by creating two rectangles. Create a rectangle and it's just going to be a little rectangle. I, I did it with cursor more easily. So I switched to cursor and just touched in the water and made myself roughly an inch by longer than the skirt piece so I can push that up against it. I didn't cancel. You know how I tell you to do things and then I don't do them. Okay, so I'm going to push these up against that straight line because I want this exactly straight. So modify, set rotate, choose a point on the line and then the line, choose the top of the line and then the counterpart, say cancel so it stays straight. Okay, so when you create a piece like this, you end up giving up a little bit of fit in order to have a yoke that's all one piece. So we're going to lose the benefit of this dart across the middle. And maybe that's not going to be too big of a deal. I'm going to measure that space. So that's only a fourth of an inch extra we've got added here. We may end up compensating for it, but I'll wait and see. So I do want this right on that line, but I also want those to come close to overlapping. It looks like I need to wait until I get a little bit more information. So I'm also losing some of that dart. And that's a little odd. I would have thought that would have been balanced, but it I guess that's because of the shape. Okay, so there's always pluses and minuses to this. If I push this over here, then I need to make up for that space so that it's not too small. If I don't have this out here, I have to have this line length be that long. So in order to get rid of that dart and have it match. That's a little bit of a brain teaser. So some of you are going to want to know exactly how to do this and all of the little details. And some of you are going to want the simple version So, to be, well, we'll back up. 
First, I'm going to line this line up on top of here. So I want this here. I'm going to line this up together because we want it all one piece. So I'm going to line it up from the corner and line this one up from the corner and say cancel. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the lower one. And the one I start with is where it goes. So before I do anything else, I'm going to combine these pieces each into one separate piece, which means that you could turn this into gathers right now and use this separate piece as one and gather this onto it. And you could do the same thing with this piece and gather it onto there and then have a waistband down the middle. And that would be what would give you your most fitted look. But this one doesn't have a seam. It doesn't appear to have any type of a seam there. So they're getting all of their fit control out of the side and if she wears this all day, there will be crushing across here by the end of the day. But it's on a model. It's freshly pressed. She's sucking in her stomach. You can't tell any of that's happening. But to wear this all day, there will be crushing around the middle because it isn't going to fit quite the same as having a horizontal dart going through here. All right. So what I'm doing right now is the equivalent of putting a seam in the middle between those two. I'm going to get rid of it, but that's what it would look like if I sewed it together. So create piece trays again. And that is my front bodice yoke. And I can save that and use it on something else later. So I'm going to go ahead and put my name in front of it. Whenever you make basic things like this, it's handy to save the pieces because you can mix and match. Right, and then I'll trace this one off. And there's my front skirt yoke. And I'm going to put a 3 on it so I know it's 3 inches wide. And I'll probably change this one so I know it's 2 inches wide. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is get rid of some of these. I'm going to combine the lines. Modify line, combine. And I'm going clockwise in an order because it likes that better. Okay, so this, if I wanted to now, I could fill that in, or it could be a dart. And when this dart is sewn, or the gathers are sewn in, and it meets right there, you'd put a notch right here, and then this would sew together, and the gathers would be up here, and that would be solid. So, because that's in a convenient place right now, I am going to create a notch and put it... Oh, come on. There you go. Okay, so I want my notch right there. And I want this notch right here. So I would do the same thing with this. I could gather that or sew in that dart and then sew those two together and I would have a dress without added fullness, but it would have a yoke and a skirt. So I don't need these anymore. 
I'm not going to delete them yet, but I don't really need them. Okay, so if we come back to these and we want to combine this into one, now that's matching up better. And typically, if I line that up exactly on the corner, the reason that they're not um, Sorry, I don't finish the sentence unless I'm looking at it. Okay. The reason that these are not coming exactly in the same place is because this curve is a little bit more shallow than that one. And if we pushed it down, that would go into place, but that's not our goal. So, I don't want this to be a sharp point right here. And I could just create a two point curve from here to here and blend it so that it fits similarly to the waist, but you'd have a little bit of extra and that would look fine. But you'd have a lot of extra here, which would mean you'd get wrinkles that cover a space more like that. So instead of leaving it that way, I'm going to halfway between these two would be about here. So if I move that halfway down and I overlap this, as much as this has a gap, then I'll be missing this amount on the side seam. It will make it a little bit short, but it'll be a little bit long here. Can you hear the gears turning? So when you do something like this and you put in something that doesn't leave room for as many seams, you sacrifice the fit a little bit. It's really pretty. I would be happy wearing it all day and having a little bit of wrinkling happening by the end of the day with that. But now, this is a lot longer than this. So if I decide to pull this up and make it a little bit taller here, in order to retain the fit, I'd have to cut some of that off here on the side. So those are design choices. Okay, so to keep it simple, I'm going to put in a two point curve right here. It starts just below where my right angle is going to join. and I'm going to make it a little bit curvy right there. And I'm going to trace it off. And I feel like I need to go with the wider space. So when I trace it, I'm going to just use this line. I'm not going to use the straight line that I wanted to use, but I will use the straight line as Oh, I will use this straight line and I'll use this one as a interior line so I can fix it afterward. Create piece trace. I'll just start with that. Now note that I'm touching this empty space of the line up here 
and then when I touch this one, then when I touch the next part of the line that I want, I touch the part of the line that I want, not the other part. Okay. And the internal lines that I want, no, I want, no, hmm, that one. And I'm going to keep those two just because. And you're all sitting there saying, I could have done that. And I said, okay. So that's what the outline of my piece would look like. So I'm going to put on their front waist yoke. So I could save those if I want to, but this is my information. So I'm going to right click and say piece to menu and get it out of my way. Oh, not that one. Well, okay. So this line I'm going to change the length of it, modify line, adjust, choose the line, pull it out longer, and this is one of those things that that might have been easier to do on paper, but most of the things we do, it's easier on the computer screen. Modify line, swap, choose the dotted line, choose the solid line, say OK. And then I'm going to delete the extra one and say OK. And I'm going to modify combine. Well, that one's already OK. Those are combined though. And those two. And I like to leave this information on there. I would leave it the way it is and sew a test sample and depending on what fabric you're using you're going to get a different result. If you use a really heavy couch fabric for this it's not going to go anywhere and it's going to be just fine. But if you use a softer fabric then you might want to modify it and that's, that's going to be a fabric based outcome. So most of the things you will be sewing will be out of a muslin type of fabric, but I'm just telling you how I would do it. So I would leave that alone, call it my best shot, and plan to sew this part together and then sew that together and see how it fits. And we might be pleasantly surprised. So you would just sew those three pieces together and then it would look like this. I haven't got into putting in the extra gathers yet though. We have a little bit, but not that much. So that's probably triple the amount that we've got in this space. Okay, so that's my first piece that I've got ready just for this. If I'm making a final project, I want to save all of these pieces together and not lose them, just in case I have to leave in a hurry. So I'm going to start a new model, add pieces. I don't want basic form 13, I want my name. Oh, well, that's not going to fit alphabetically very well, is it? And 
if it's a final project, maybe FP1 or dress, whatever you want to label it, just so that we can find it again. And then I'm going to add my pieces. And I have this weird habit of grouping them that way. Because the order you choose them is the order that they're going to come up on the row. Okay, those are all of my pieces. So they are all saved in the model now. And because I don't want to mess with the others, I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I'm just going to close this little tab. And it says I've got all these unsaved pieces and I can just say save and close. So the pieces have been saved. I hope. We'll find out, won't we? So, file open. And I don't know where, oh, there it is. So those are all of my pieces. And I got them back and they're in my model. And now I can't accidentally mess up originals. And that makes me feel better. Uh-oh. Those are my front pieces. I'm going to just delete all the pieces. I know I want these front ones. I know because of the way I selected them, I don't want those. But I do want all of these back pieces. There. Okay. Those two go together, and this is the middle, and that's the center back. And this had a random name. See, there's a good reason not to give them random names. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. We'll start by combining those together. So, set rotate, modify set rotate, touch, slide, highlight, release when you get the square, touch the line, touch, slide, highlight, release when you get the square, and touch the line, and now they're touching, so say cancel, and they're aligned properly, and I can create piece trace. Say OK. OK again. And there's your piece. And back, bodice, waist yoke. I like to abbreviate things. You don't have to. So I don't really need that anymore, but all right. I didn't say it, and you might be having a hard time with it, but I always start with the piece that's on the grain and attach the other pieces to it. So the center back is on the grain, so I'm going to start with that one and modify set rotate this one I don't want to move so I'm going to attach the other pieces to it and since I can hear sadness I'll show you how to fix it okay so I did it in order of the three one two three and now they're all lined up together 
create piece trace. And we have our corresponding piece. Okay. So if you didn't do it the same way I did, You don't have to do this part. I'm only doing it so I can set it up the way it would have been. Okay, so say you started with this piece and not the one that's on the center back. If you started with your side seam piece and you did modify set rotate and you chose this part and brought that one to it, then neither of them will be on grain. So if you traced it off and now you have this and you say okay, a way to save it would be to choose that grain line now, but I won't. So it's off grain and because I don't want to save it, I'm just going to keep that name. I want to reattach this so that it's on the straight of grain. And to do that, I would go to Modify, Set, Rotate, and choose a line that I know is straight. Just choose two points on the line and choose this line and cancel so that it's on the correct position in the line. And while it's there, go over to Modify, Piece, Realign, and then realign the grain. So I'm choosing the grain dot and now it says to choose the grain and then touch it and then it's straight again and that piece is now identical to this one. But don't stress out of over it, just fix it or reposition your pieces and do them again. Okay, so I want to save these two, but I want to combine them first. Mm, I want a notch first. Create a notch here. And to, the notch needs to match these two. So now I'm going to modify combine clockwise in an order. Okay. So I'm going to send them both to the menu. And there, I have to click the down arrow because they disappeared off the screen. So they're safe, but I also want to add them to the model. I didn't add those to the model though, did I? So I'm going to zoom in. As tight as I can. Keep moving them together if you need to. So that is, is as tight as it will go and I want to overlap them exactly. And then zoom out. Oh, 
But wait, I can't just do that, can I? Because that's not what I did to my front. So, I'm going to flip this piece over and try to align it similarly. But while I've got it here, well, I'll undo that. There. Now it's exactly where I had it before. And this one is a little longer this time. So I'm going to create a two point line from that corner and right click in the water and say horizontal. So I have a line that comes all the way down and I'll end up just making that one a little bit bigger, which is part of the process of making a yoke. And these videos you can apply to paper patterns if you're making a paper pattern instead. Okay, so I'm going to flip this one over. Modify piece flip. I'm, I'm going to choose the front and say OK and flip that yoke over and then I'm going to move it up underneath this one because they're going to sew together exactly right here on the side so I want to align those two points perfectly and I'm going to copy the side seam onto this so, I did get that right. I zoomed all the way in, but I guess that's, that's, hmm. So I'm going to pick this one up and line it up here exactly and see how far off I am over here. I'm off a little bit. We want to know how much, don't we? You can just watch. You don't have to do it. Okay. From here to here is... What did I do? Oh, distance, two lines. From here to here. No? straight. Well, apparently, it's a very small amount because it isn't recognizing it. I'll start over. It's just under a fourth of an inch. So it's it's better to err on the side of making it too big. And we're going to make, we're going to do a test pattern first. So we'll sew it together. And if it ends up to be a little bit too big, we can just pinch some out and take it out of the center back or the center front. And it will be a lot easier to get it right that way. And if we make a guess and get it too small, then it's not going to fit as well. So, I'm going to start by, and that will compensate for this. So, I'm going to create a line and I'm going to copy it. And I want to copy, where is that one attached? It's attached to this piece, so I'm going to copy that line and then say OK, and it wants to know which piece is getting that line, and I want it to go on this one. 
So I'll say OK, and here's the line, and I'll come back and say Cancel. So it will be right, right where I copied it from. So I'll cancel out of that. Now I'm going to pick up my front and move it out of the way. And then this is going to become my back. So create piece trace clockwise and in order. And then I'm hoping it'll just jump this. If it doesn't, I'll come back and fix it. But I'm just going to choose ah, the curved line right there and say OK. Now in, I can choose these for internals, I guess, if I want to. There we go. OK. And I'm saying OK that the errors are there. I get it. That's fine. So it did jump that and I got my piece. And that's my back yoke. So I'll say OK and cancel. So I don't need these anymore. I've already got them saved, but this is now my back yoke and my front yoke. So the important thing to me was that they are identical on the side seam where they sew together on the side seam and the center front and the center back are parallel to each other so they'll balance with the rest of the pattern. And because this is the back, somewhere on it I'm going to want a double notch. Where this one has a single notch. But it doesn't go to that. This goes to that. Okay, so I'm going to back out for a minute just to give you reference. That's my pile of not in use right now. And this is my back yoke, so it sews right here. I'm going to move the front out of the way and my back skirt. So to put it together right now, you'd sew a dart and a dart or just straight across and gather in the fullness and attach that here. And the reason this is curved more is because this is where the dart that we had that was in here is now horizontal, part of that process. Same with this. So you would sew that dart and then you could sew all three pieces together and you'd have a fitted dress. And if I flip this one back over, modify, flip around the waistline. These two will sew together exactly. And you can either probably for alteration purposes if you wanted to, you could sew these three pieces together and then those three and then down the side seam. If I were sewing it together to wear, I would sew the bodice together and then the waist together and then the skirt together and then attach them in the round because it would hang nicer. But for fitting alterations on your first test sample, it would probably be easiest to do top, middle, bottom, top, middle, bottom, because then you can let it out and change it just on the side seam. But I guess that depends on where the change needs to be. So do what you want to do. Okay, I'm gonna delete this group and I want this one to go to the menu I'm 
I also want it in my model. Okay, so I've been keeping up with them. So these two pieces are completely finished until we need to add seam allowance to them. I have potential screen garbage on them. And the notch that I have on this right now is more geared toward fitting into that dart and that dart and that one and those two. And when I add fullness, to my skirt, I'm going to want to get these back down and reevaluate where my notches are because I'll want them in a different place. So I'm going to save them as another name so I can keep these as a separate piece if I'm creating file storage of basic pieces. So file, save as. This one is still my back yoke, but I'm just going to make it version 2 and this is still my front yoke and I'm gonna make that one version 2 so if I'm gonna do that I want those both in my model and you may want to separate those out later but it's not uncommon to have to go back and make adjustments. Okay, so I'm going to send these two temporarily to the menu. Now I need to add fullness to these. We don't have a picture of the back of the dress. The skirt is going to be the easiest one, so I'm going to start with that. I want to add the same amount of fullness to both and I've got some options. I could close this dart and open it into flare on the side. I could just come straight across and then add more and I think that's going to be the simplest and more likely what they did with that dress. Hmm, maybe not. There is quite a bit of taper on that side. So, the way I'm going to do it, there would be slightly less taper so if you want it more full well I will do it the easy way first because that's what we need to do okay so for that purpose on this one I'm just going to draw a straight line across here And I'm going to trace it off. And it has labeled it 55. But lower front for dress Um, I'm going to give it a version 2 and then
Don't forget to go clockwise in an order. And also, I'm just adding a space too. And these two, I'm going to send back to the menu. When I get all finished, we'll choose the ones that actually go into the final project model and maybe change the name of this one to, or the other one to additional pieces or something. So that one I'm going to do piece to menu. And these two I'm going to delete. because if I just delete them, that line won't be there anymore and it won't be changed. Okay, so I want those two back and I'm going to set the bodices aside. I could end the video now. Okay. That dip concerns me a little bit. I'm going to create a two-point line. You don't need to do this. Just watch for a minute and bring it in vertical. And I can automatically bring it down to there and then blend the rest. I'm kind of wishing I had done it the other way because I feel better about that, but I, this one needs to be simplified. So I'm going to do the same thing with that vertical. And I'm going to see if that will cut off right there. Modify clip. I want to keep this part of the line where it runs into that one. But either it runs into it in two places, no, it doesn't run into it at all. So I'm going to rotate it. Am I? Or am I going to split it? No, I'm going to use a curve. Create a two point curve. And I'm going to join the curve right here, and then I'm going to blend into this one and come backward a little bit. And just blend them in. So that bridges. So at this point I'm going to split the line. Modify line split. say OK. And then I'm just going to swap that plus that for that. Modify line swap. Clockwise in an order. I want that internal line and then that one. Say OK, and I'm swapping it for ooh, that one. Would have been nice if I had combined them first, huh? But that worked. So now I have a nice smooth transition right there. It didn't change a lot. It will just look nicer. And I'll delete the extra. And I have some lines that need to be merged. And I'm going to split this one right here. But because of the shape of the front, is it the front yoke? 
I don't know that I'm comfortable changing that a lot because I've already cut this one down a lot and to drop that more could be a problem. Okay, modify line split. That's a piece split. Modify line split on the line where it touches. Swap the line. Make sure you're in line. Choose that one and trade it for those. Oh, but yeah, that would be fine. Look at this. This has so much extra right here. It's going to be okay if we bump this down a little bit. I think. Let's look at it. Create two point line. That's the lowest point of this curve. Then right click, vertical, and cross over. Oh. So I am pre trimming this down, maybe a fourth of an inch. Straight from here to here. Yeah, we're losing a fourth of an inch right there. And I think that will be okay. So I'm going to split it here and swap that. Modify line, swap. Dotted line, solid line, OK, and then delete this mess. And you want to have as clean of lines as possible and still retaining your shape. And right here, I want to make sure that this, this joins with two right angles and this joins with two right angles. And I don't quite have that. And the reason I want to do that is that it's going to lay nice and flat if we do. And for some reason, when that line got offset, it bumped up. So I'm going to do that same thing all the way along here and fix that. And if you're a really beginnerly beginner, go ahead and ignore this and just leave it alone and move on without doing it but this is how I would fix my joints that need to come together as a right angle if you want to do an extra nice job. So create a two point line and I'm going to come from the widest point and I know that's the widest because there's an intermediate there. Right click and say vertical and just pull it down and then I'm going to do the same thing here. Right click vertical, pull it down. So I'm going to swap both lines to those because when they sew together it will come together neatly. This one I'm going to go the opposite direction because I don't want to lose anything. This one, what I'm cutting off here, I'm adding here. And this one I've already trimmed and I don't want to cut off more. And this is a little clunky, so if I were using paper, I would just use my curve and blend that. But since I'm not using paper, I'm going to use my two-point curve and join it from that corner. Hmm. Have I done? We'll come back to that. Okay. 
I want to fix those two. So modify line split right there for swapping and right there for swapping. Modify line swap. Choose the dotted, say OK. Choose the solid, say OK. Dotted, solid, delete. So by the time you're at manufacturing level, those little things become extremely important because when you line the, fa the pieces up on the marker, then they fit together better and when you sew them together they hang better. So I'm going to put those back together again. Modify, line, combine. Okay, so back to this one. Oh. Got to have more space. Delete line. Okay, I'm going to zoom in closer to this one because I'm going to blend that curve around right there. Create two point curve. Ah! There. So I'm going to split that line too. Is it already split? No. And swap clockwise. Okay, that's going to hang a lot nicer. And I trimmed some out here, so that is going to be just fine. Delete the line. And combine the lines. Modify line, combine. All right, that is a really good stopping place. And then we can come back and add fullness to the skirts and move the darts around and add fullness to those. Videos that are this long take longer uploading. If you want to see how I, I fix the minutia details on these little pieces, you can stay, but if not, just move on to the next video. All right, I'm going up to edit point and I'm going to fix this one. I don't want a grade point right there. And I will want one on the notch, but I'm going to be moving my notch. So I'm going to get rid of it anyway. So I'm just highlighting the point and then pushing the delete key and uh oh. And then you have to say apply and okay. All right, so I've got one here. I'm going to fix those three. You can pick that up and move it out of the way. Apply. I keep forgetting to say apply. Delete and apply. And this one, highlight the point, release. And it doesn't show that it's there. So I came at it from this direction. Now I'm going to come at it from this direction. Well, that's just annoying. Oh, is that an endpoint of a line? Modify line combine. Yes, it is. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and save those just because I don't want to lose that. 
and just touch the save button at the top and choose them all and say OK. And I want to overwrite them. Okay, so they're all in the menu. Did I add these to the model? What about those two? No, it was just those. Well, if I already added them, then it will tell me no. Choose, choose. Okay. So they're in there. So all the pieces are in the model. We will come back to this and finish adding the fullness, but right now the pattern is all set up just to add the fullness. I just think that's cool.